It's a lot of information now. I'm talking really fast, but I'm so passionate about veterinary nutrition. I just can't with all these comments and people online. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, my name is Andrew Woods. I guess Dr. Woods. And if you're new to this channel, um, I'd like to talk about a video I made about uh, over a year ago titled uh, Stop Feeding Raw Meat Diets to Your Pets. And for those who are just kind of first time viewing this, uh, I made a video a while back ago pretty much just summarizing the risks of feeding a raw meat based diet to pets, dogs and cats. And uh, in my opinion, in the video, I basically expressed that I personally do not believe that, uh, I personally believe that the risks far outweigh the benefits of feeding a raw meat based diet to your pet because it basically, uh, it's basically a public health concern. So when you feed raw meat to your pet, um, there's a high likelihood that it could be contaminated with dangerous bacteria like salmonella, salmonella E. coli. And there is a really good chance that you or your pet could get sick from this. This, this is this is well known, documented. This isn't new information. There's been studies of pets getting sick from feeding their pets raw meat based diets. I'll definitely link those down below. And not only that, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you definitely do not feed a raw meat based diet. If you have anyone in your house that is immunocompromised or any um, anyone that is, you know, very elderly or very young, and this video is not in focus, bruh, are we good? Please, there, oh, okay, we're back, okay. So um, I made that video uh, about a year ago and that was when I was uh, still in vet school. I'm now, I've now graduated, I'm now a vet fully licensed veterinarian. Um, I made that video in vet school and at the time when I made that video, I was just coming off the highs of a nutrition ro uh, rotation. So basically when you're in vet school, you go through different rotations, different parts for the hospital. So I was doing a nutrition rotation and we were really learning about um, all of, uh, basically just about pet nutrition as a whole and how it implements into specific pets to manage specific pets uh, that we see. And uh, our professor, who is uh, board certified in veterinary nutrition. Um, so this isn't just a veterinarian, this is someone who's gone through, gotten their veterinary degree, and then gone extra time, extra years to become actually board certified in veterinary nutrition. Um, so pretty much the only person that's truly qualified to come up with a, a diet for your pet. And uh, that person was telling us about all of the risks associated with feeding raw meat based diets and how it is good to stay away from that. And that's kind of what I kind of what I made it as because uh, at the time and as of present, I'm still extremely passionate about nutrition, not only human nutrition, but as, as well as pet nutrition. And um, when I learned just about all of the misinformation going around in the media, on the news, on the internet, uh, about all of the so-called uh, proposed benefits of raw meat based diets, feeding it to pets, um, when you see that versus me when I'm learning in, 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 in veterinary school and my doctorate degree, you see such a stark contrast and you're like, holy crap, what is going on here? There's a, there's a huge ton of misinformation online and what people are saying versus what the veterinary community is saying, the veterinary nutrition community. Um, and it was one of those things where I was so passionate about it, I decided to make a video for you guys. And if you watch the video, um, I just, <laughs> I used a ton of sarcasm in the video. I made a lot of jokes and um, for that, I I will like to say, I definitely would like to apologize. Um, a lot of people were burnt out on that. Uh, it's a pretty infamous video right now. I've gotten tons of hate comments on that video. Tons of comments, uh, death threats, uh, insults, homophobic slurs, really the gamut showing people's, uh, just how horrible people can be in the comments section. And um, a, a lot of good comments as well. I'm not gonna negate that. There was some good discussion going on. Um, but just a ton of misinformation going around and being spread and that in part had to do with my presentation during that video um, Again, I was extremely sarcastic and and making lots of jokes and not um, not super uh, How do you say? Uh, <laughs> not super professional if you will um, And so for that I would definitely like to sincerely apologize I was wrong at the time I thought it would be a funny video and when I make videos for YouTube I try to make them as entertaining as possible because that is my way of making videos. I, I love them to be incredibly entertaining and engaging as well as providing information and at time I definitely uh, overcrossed the line and it came off as um, just not super prof professional to some of you guys and again for that I sincerely apologize that is my bad. Um, as a as a doctor, as a professional, um, I shouldn't be um, making videos that portray myself and the information I'm trying to present in that way, because there's already so much misinformation on going online, being spread online, that people kind of don't know where to look. It seems like 
you have people screaming in the comments one thing and then others saying others and it's like who do you trust but i do not absolutely do not apologize for the content presented in that video because i think it's in incredibly important to to get that information out there to people um, to have multiple sources of information and I hope that uh, again I'm not telling anyone I'm not going to try to tell anyone what to do so in the era of professionalism uh, I think it's also important when spreading knowledge that you need to have clear transparency because if you're not transparent if you're not honest people don't know whether to believe you because they don't have a frame of view to, to view you as you're just like who is this random person so uh, I like to start off saying again, my name is Andrew Woods, uh, Dr. Woods. I graduated from the University of Georgia in 2019, go dogs. And um, basically, I basically like to clear up some of the misinformation going, along, going around. Uh, a ton of the comments in that video I made a year ago were things saying I'm a shill, um, he's a pet food shill, pet food companies are paying him, pet food companies pay the school he went to, they pay all the doctors there, they're paying off all this information, I'm just paid off, I'm just bought by the pet food industry, by big pet food companies like Purina, Royal Canin Hills, I am bought. And I'm here to say, in full transparency, to tell you that could be nothing further from the truth. <laughs> because I have not received a single dollar from a single pet food company. Um, I can testify that um, and the amount of uh, exorbitant amount of student loans that I have to pay off still. I have, I owe, literally owe hundreds of thousands of dollars in student debt. I'm still paying off. But uh, just again, to, to provide full transparency, um, going into vet school, let's, uh, le let's say as far as pet food people, pet food industry people go, I have, I will say, I have received some form of compensation from these pet food companies, not money obviously, but when you're in vet school, when you're going through day-to-day -day life, um, uh, sometimes these companies will bring veterinarians in, not random people on the marketing team, but actual veterinarians come in to, uh, to, to, to teach the students. And what they do is they hold um, lecture, uh, basically they hold um, lunch meetings d during, during the week, during the days that we go to vet school. And during those lunch meetings, they will provide free lunch for all, all the vet students. So I have gotten some free lunches. And what they will do is uh, hold lectures. Um, and the lectures have to be 80% actual information. So not marketing, not promoting a brand. They have to be 80% actual knowledge that they're teaching the vet students. And then up to like 15 to 20% can be marketing for whatever product they're trying to sell that helps convey um, essentially the message that they're putting out there. Um, so that means I definitely didn't get paid. No one shoved down these pet food kibble uh, companies down my throat when I was in vet school. Absolutely not. Um, again, I definitely got some free lunches uh, and some knowledge because uh, these pet food companies actually employ veterinarians to help promote their brands, but not just promote their brands. I want to make that entirely clear but as well as providing information and, and, and continuing education to veterinary students and, and the general public about topics in veterinary medicine as it applies to the specific products that these pet food companies provide. And I would like to stay, it's kind of as a side note, that these pet food companies, this kibble that so many people are calling trash, garbage, corn, filler, blah, 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 um, it, it's kind of disingenuous. And, I'll, and I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later, but so many of these diets veterinarians actually use to help help animals that are suffering from certain diseases. For example, we have veterinary diets, prescription diets of kibble that can dissolve bladder stones in dogs and cats. That can help manage diabetes and pancreatitis and other GI gastrointestinal is issues that pets face. So to kind of slam all these pet food uh, kibble diets is, is kind of disingenuous by people. So I definitely look out for that. And then people say that all of vet school is funded by these pet food companies. And again, that is sadly not true. Who funds the vet schools? The students who pay for tuition. Obviously, I have hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Um, we pay the, the we pay these vet schools, not pet food companies. The only thing pet food companies do provide, will provide is actually donation don donating food to the vet schools, um, specifically prescription diets and other diets um, that the school uses to help treat diseases as well. Um, that, so again, there's not they're not directly paying off the schools to teach us information. They're simply um, donating food to to help the hospital could be, because we have a teaching hospital associated with the vet school. So it's just the vet so it's the vet school and the teaching hospital that provides um, actual care to patients that come and see it on a daily basis. And those patients need food. And sometimes they need specialized foods to help with their specific conditions. Again, like I said before. Now, as far as teaching goes, we're not taught by pet food companies <laughs> in, our, in our veterinary nutrition classes. Contrary to top popular belief online, again, veterinarians do receive extensive training on nutrition. Um, I was taught by a board certified veterinary nutritionalist 
who is definitely not on the payroll of any pet food company. They're simply here to provide us information about pet foods and how to choose the best diets for cats and dogs and learning about nutrition and pets in general because there's a lot of misinformation online. Again, it's important to get it from a trusted source like a veterinarian. So again, all these all the, all these things going around that that veterinarians are bought out by the pet food companies is simply untrue. Um, and then uh, people will say, hey, when you go into any any uh, any veterinary clinic, they're always trying to sell you these diets. Well, again, some of those diets are actually beneficial to the pets they're trying to provide. Some of these diets cure diseases, help prevent diseases, help manage diseases. So they are important. Another reason vets choose to try to sell these products to people is because they believe in the product. It's not all a marketing front. These pet food companies are not paying, are not directly paying veterinarians to push their products. They're not promoting these veterinarians by paying them to promote and sell their products. Vets are selling their products because they believe in these products. And uh, of course, vets take a margin on, off it, but not directly from the company. They may get a discount when ordering the food, but they're still paying for the food. They're not getting paid anything, okay? On the topic of kibble and pet foods, um, again in the comments, there's so many people that think these, that they think kibble in general is just horrible to feed your pets. And, and again, if you have all the time in the world to feed your, your pet a, home, a homemade diet or, or any sort of diet that you're preparing yourself that, that's not kibble, Kudos to you if you have the time and energy, but unfortunately, most of the general population who owns pets feed kibble. That's kind of just the way the markets work right now. Um, there's definitely a huge push into homemade diets and as well as raw food diets, it seems like. And um, I definitely don't have a problem with home food, home cooked diets. There's so many people in my last video that were bashing me for that. Hold up, I don't have a problem with home cooked diets. If you have the time and energy and love enough, your and love your pet enough, excuse me, to feed. A, a home cooked diet, kudos to you. But uh, unfortunately, there are definitely risks with doing that. Um, specifically, dogs and cats require sp uh, specific nutrients, specific vitamin, vitamins and minerals that are specific to each breed. For example, cats and dogs actually require taurine in the diet. Now, taurine is amino acid that um, that is required for cats and dogs to live and thrive. And if they don't have that in the diet, they can actually develop heart diseases um, called DCM, dilated cardiomyopathies, basically heart disease. Um, so it's very important, very important that if you're cooking a whole meat based diet or giving any sort of diet that's not kibble, um, you definitely want to have that diet formulated by a board certified veterinary nutritionist. That is the only person that can formulate a diet for your specific pets, age, breed, size, any medical conditions, that is the only person that is qualified to do that. Not someone at the pet food stores, not someone online telling you what to do, a board certified veterinary nutritionist. That is someone who's gone to vet school as well as gone additional training to be board certified specifically in the studies of nutrition and pets. Again, extremely important if you're feeding that, that you need to, again, consult with a, a board certified veterinary nutritionist to actually formulate a diet for you that is gonna be healthy and help your pet live and thrive. Now, <laughs> it's a lot of information now. I'm talking really fast, but I'm so passionate about veterinary nutrition. I just can't with all these comments and people online and um, uh, just so much mis misinformation. It makes, me, um, it makes me very frustrated because vets are getting such a bad rap for selling kibble diets. And I feel like there's, uh, I feel like there's just a lack of transparency and general knowledge um, and ge just general public knowledge that people are, are, are becoming so negatively biased towards veterinarians. Again, this sort of ties, ba ties back into the raw food stuff I was talking about um, because there's so many claims online that raw food diets are, are, are better. They make your pet live longer. They give your pet um, less stool, makes their, stool, their, their poop smell less. And some of those things are true, but some of those things can also be accomplished by other diets that are cooked or kibble. It doesn't have to be raw. Uh, raw raw diet um, and again at the time um, all, all those um, anecdotal claims anecdotal not anecdotal I know I said that last time a lot of anecdotal claims okay sometimes when I talk too fast I miss speaking words it was, a, it was definitely a problem that I have specific to me that doesn't mean I'm not qualified any less qualified um, <laughs> but even though there's so many um, anecdotal claims of people feeding raw meat based diets that's providing such a benefit that they're to the pet there is really really a real real risk out there um i mean just i just saw an article in the news i'll bring it up in a second for you guys a study came out recently that said raw food raw dog food in uh, particular contains drug resistant bacteria a study found that's right a study published in the jsap basically the journal of small animal practice found that people feeding a raw meat based diet those diets were containing 
antibiotic resistant bacteria. Also side note, this study was not funded by the pet food industry. Now, what does that mean? So basically, um, if someone gets an infection, a bacterial infection, they'll, they'll typically be prescribed some antibiotics to help clear the infection. However, sometimes um, those bacteria will mutate where they will become resistant to the actual antibiotics given, which means they don't work. And this is becoming a huge public health concern in the recent years as we go along. Um, and the scientific community is uh, basically scared that in the future, there will be so much antibiotic resistant bacteria that we will not have an antibiotic to cure certain infections and diseases in animals and people. And that's incredibly worrying. So the fact that a study has come out recently that shows that a bunch of raw meat based diets that are being fed to cats and dogs are containing and have actual antibiotic resistant bacteria is is really scary and i think that's something that needs to be out there not only that i have personally seen in my own uh practice i've seen not only in my own practice in my own schooling i've seen patients come in that are having diarrhea having problems that are being fed a raw meat based diet and when you do a test in their stool are finding bacteria um, that are causing these diseases this is a problem happening in pets so based on what you know about me a person who has no ties to the pet food company, besides someone who spent the last eight years of my life trying to um, trying to help animals on a day-to-day -day basis and all as aspects and facets of life. I just wanna make it clear that um, not everybody, in fact, the wide, the wide majority of the veterinary community agrees with me that feeding raw meat-based diets at this time um, is not generally recommended, is not recommended at all because there are more um, side, there are more risks than benefits at this point. It's just not supported by science at all. If you're part of the scientific community, if you believe in good peer-reviewed science, then um, I don't see how you can believe at that in that at this point. Um, I think more studies should be done, but again, because of all those side effects and risks, I don't think it's it's. Uh, I don't definitely do not recommend feeding a raw meat-based diet. Again, I have no problem. Just just cook the meat, like I said in the video. Just cook the meat. Now, um, a lot of people. Uh, may and are probably questioning at the end of this video well shoot andrew shoot dr woods what do i feed my pet what's the best food and i would like to say that i will be um posting a video more in depth about that in the future about what i believe are the best diets to feed about what you should look for when choosing to, a pet food to feed your pet and i'm actually going to be providing some links below with more about information on this topic um, just to get a head start anyone gets some light reading in but those are kind of my thoughts at this point in 2020 as we are currently in a pandemic. Um, I don't think we need to add more problems to the list. But again, that's just my opinion. Um, and whenever, uh, whenever you have questions regarding pet food, what pet, what's the best food to feed your pet? Um, I highly, highly encourage you to talk to your local veterinarian. Don't trust me. Don't trust anybody online. Trust someone you can actually form a personal connection with. Someone who you believe and can trust. And most of the time, that person is your local veterinarian, not someone in the pet food stores who has had some nutrition training courses, not someone online who definitely doesn't know you and may be having, and may have ulterior motives into promoting a certain type of diet or lifestyle. <laughs> who you can trust is your local veterinarian who you sit down and have an honest conversation with about what the best pet food is for your pet. So I hope that helps guys and I'll see you next time. Also a side note, <laughs> last side note of the day, I got a new cat, which I definitely haven't shown in these videos before. His name is Ty. I got him last year during, before the pandemic. And uh, he's the cutest little cat. And if you want, you can follow us on TikTok because we post there almost daily. Yes, I've gotten into TikTok. I know, crazy. Um, <laughs> I just really like TikTok. But um, ag again, I know there's gonna be a lot of comments, uh, a lot of hate comments down below. A lot of people slandering me. Um, but again, when choosing the best diet for your pet, if you can't trust me, if you can't trust online, go to your local vet. You can definitely trust them. Um, and I just kind of want to clear up all of the misinformation that's going around, uh, as well as all of the slander against veterinarians. There's so many people not trusting veterinarians nowadays, and I think that's crazy. We spend so much of our lives. We go through, we go through eight plus years of, of higher education to, to 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 treat, to help treat and care and help make li your help <laughs> and help make your pet live happy and healthy for as long as possible. That is what we do, guys. Um, so I think more more people need to I think more vets need to have honest conversations with people and Be more transparent about why they recommend certain things and certain products and certain pet foods and um, Again rant over I'm um, rant over. Uh, we'll see you next time until then Peace out say, say bye Ty say bye Ty bye Ty Bye 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 guys Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. Okay. He's not a kisser. You get the point. See ya